Hey YouTube, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to part three of my journey into modular synthesis and it is time to show you the beginnings of my Eurorack system. Today I'll be showing you my new case. Um, you can see that there's a couple of modules on there already so I'll be talking about those separately in different videos but today um, we're going to be talking about the rack about the the case sorry because obviously the case is the first thing that one needs to buy um, if you are to start your euro rack system because of course you do need uh, somewhere to put your modules so um, as with everything in euro rack it can be quite uh, confusing and uh, a bit daunting to know where to start because as with the modules with the cases as well, there's always a lot of choice and different directions that you can go in. Um, and I did think long and hard about the direction I wanted to go in. I considered building my own case, um, and there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can either build it entirely from scratch with your own materials, or of course you could buy a kit, um, which come in many different forms from many different companies. Or you can go for a pre-built case, uh, like the one that you see before you. <laughs> Um, you can also go for one with a supplied, already installed bus board, power board, um, or you could go for an external flying bus board. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you could go. Um, I decided initially against um, building my own, firstly because my DIY skills are zero. Um, other people who have more um, advanced DIY skills might be able to get away with that. and. Um, you know, I certainly wouldn't discourage you against it. Um, but for me, after a lot of thought, I did decide to go for a pre-built case uh, purely for um, ease of, <laughs> of getting started and ease of use, really. Um, I went for a, a 6U uh, 84HP case, um, because as you can see in relation to the rest of my gear that I have on this particular table here, it fits perfectly. Uh, it's not going to be too heavy for the the table it fits really nicely and at just six u um, it's easily expandable should i wish to in the future so i thought that starting with a six u 84 hp size would uh you know give me a lot of expandability but still give me enough space to install lots of modules to get lots of different things going at once you know there's room for lots of different um modules in there so i thought that uh, 6U 84HP was a good starting point. Um, of course you don't have to go this big, you can always go for a 3U case um, or of course you can go a lot bigger, you can go for 12U and you know over 100 HP so um, it completely depends on what you want to get out of your system and what, to, what you want to use it for but for me starting off um, I thought this was a good starting point. Um, of course cost is also another factor and I thought that you know, going starting off with something like a 12U case, um, although it would be within my price range, it's I, I just wanted to get started as quickly as possible, really. So I wanted to get my case going and start getting some modules to fill it with. So this is the option I went with. Um, the other thing, of course, you have to consider is whether to go for a pre-installed bus board or a flying bus board. And I'd read a few sort of different theories about it, and the ones that most people seem to sort of go far for that the um, that the flying bus boards give you more flexibility in terms of your connections and what you can install but if I just zoom in to my pre-installed bus board here you'll see the number of connections you've got is really well more than you'll need put it that way um, so even though it's pre-installed and you can't move the connections around like you can with a flying bus board there's so many that you won't use them all and it still gives you a huge amount of flexibility because of course you do connect your modules um, with uh, cables as you can see there and so they still give you a degree of flexibility you know they, you can, they can stretch to um, going between a few different of the uh, um, connections so there is still scope there for uh, moving around so I felt having sort of looked into it a bit that these connections and the pre-installed bus board gave me plenty of flexibility and uh, exactly what I need. So 
I couldn't personally really see much of an advantage with going with a flying bus board. The other disadvantage to that, in my opinion as well, is that the power source takes up a bit of space on your rack. Um, it's not going to be much space, you can probably get them for about 2 HP at, um, at this point, but, you know, it's still space that could be filled with another uh, module which uh, would actually give you more usage out of your, your rack space, so um, that was another uh, deciding factor for me, but like I say, um, with your rack choices is key. So if you're happy to go with the flying bus board and use up some space, some space on your rack with your your power source, then by all means go for that because uh, the power sources are quite affordable these days as well. So uh, that's definitely an option that you can go for. So the uh, case that you actually see before you is the uh, a dirt for um, low cost case, which I think I got from Toman uh, over in. Deutschland. <laughs> um, it arrived very very quickly, no fuss, no problems, uh, good service there from Toman and um, I'm really really happy with it. Um, one thing that people will say when you read your, the reviews of them is that they're because they are low cost they don't have much of a finish on them so if I just kind of zoom in you'll see that the, the wood that they use is you know pretty basic but you know it doesn't really matter and you can sort of varnish it yourself or paint it yourself or do whatever you like with it really so um, just because it's low cost doesn't mean it's bad and um, as you can see it it, it looks really pr pretty damn good and once it's full, full of modules it's going to look even better so um, I'm really pleased with it and it's a great way to start off my system so as you can see I've got two modules in there already and I'm about to order a third uh, and I'll be talking about those in separate videos because um, well I want to discuss the different modules one by one really just to give you a bit more of an overview and a detail uh, a detailed overview about each one so um, for beginners who are just getting to grips with Eurorack like me it might help you make some decisions about where what you want to buy what you want to go for what kind of direction you want to go in and that kind of thing uh, but for now um, I'm gonna sign off guys this is my case and in my next video I'll be taking you through um, my first couple of modules which you can see right here. Ta-da! Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later.